Let's take a look at how to factor a polynomial function if it's not factored for you. Um, you can probably guess if it's not factored, you will likely need to factor it in order to graph it. So let's, uh, let's start with a simple example. So in this example, this is not factored. This is actually the simplified version, meaning there's no parentheses. Uh, you can't combine any like terms because x cubed and x squared terms you can't add or subtract so that's the simplified version now what's useful uh, about the simplified version is it gives us a leading term the leading term is negative x cubed which we know tells us the end behavior so the ends of this graph behave like y equals negative x cubed so we will certainly use that um, x cubed, the left end goes down and the right end goes up, so negative x cubed flips over and the left end goes up and the right end goes down. So we know our ends now, okay? So that's going to be useful. The simplified version always gives us the leading term, which tells us the end behavior, okay? Now, uh, we also need our number line chart, our zeros and things like that. So. Uh, in order to determine our number line chart, we need to factor this. So now, if we look at factoring, so we need our factored version, f of x equals, and this is a binomial, and the leading term is negative, so we need to pull out a GCF that's negative, right, because the first term is negative, we always pull the negative out, and I can see that x squared goes into both of these terms, so I'll pull out negative x squared from both of those terms. When I pull negative x squared out of negative x cubed, that makes that a positive x to the first, and if I pull the negative x squared out of negative 2x squared, that leaves me a positive 2. And that's all the factoring I can do. Um, each of these factors are going to give me a 0. So my zeros come from each factor, which is x and x plus 2. So x equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0, which means that x would be negative 2. So our zeros are 0 and negative 2. Now, x equals 0 has a multiplicity of 2. Multiplicity 2, because the exponent on x is 2. Now that means on our number line chart we have two sign changes when x is 0. Now x equals negative 2 has a multiplicity of 1 because x plus 2 is raised to the first power. So that means x equals negative 2 has one sign change. Now we've got quite a bit of information. We know the end behavior, and we know our zeros and multiplicities or sign changes, so we can set up our number line chart. So I'll list my x values. I need to cut at negative 2 and 0. I need my, let's go ahead and write our sign changes in there. I know negative 2 has 1 sign change, and 0 has 2 sign changes. I also know that um, at those x values, negative 2 and 0, my y values are 0, because if I plug either one of those into the function, I get a y value of 0. And lastly, I can use my end behavior to get my y values on the ends of my number line. So the left end of my graph is, goes up. That means my y value on the left end of my graph is positive. And on the right end of my graph, the graph goes down, which means my y values are negative on the right end of my graph. So I know my y values on the ends because of my end behavior that I've already determined. Now I use my sign changes to figure out this middle sign. Negative 2 has an odd number of sign changes. 1 is an odd number, meaning that the sign on the left is not the same as the sign on the right of negative 2. So since this sign is positive, the sign on the right side of negative 2 better be negative. And two sign changes is an even number of sign changes, which means that on each side of this 0, the signs should be the same, and they are. Okay? So that's, that sort of confirms that our number line chart is likely correct. 
Now, since this is a polynomial, I just need to use the signs with the end behaviors and create a smooth, continuous graph with no sharp edges and no breaks. So let's draw our graph of this function. I'm going to cut my x-axis at negative 2 and 0. 0, of course, is where the y-axis is, so I can draw my y-axis there. I know at negative 2 and 0, my y values are 0, which give me points, x-intercepts. Okay, so I've got x-intercepts at those two points. Then I've got my left and right ends, so on the left end of my graph, I know I've got to go up, and I have to connect to this point, so I'll draw my left end. And my right end goes down, and it has to connect to this point, and so I've got my ends. Okay. Finally, I need to fill in between negative 2 and 0, and I know from my number line chart, between x being negative 2 and x being 0, my y values are negative, which means I have to dip below the x-axis, and then come back up and sort of curve up to this point so that I get a nice smooth curve, because this is a polynomial. And that's the graph of this function. I use a simplified version to get my leading term, which told me my end behavior. I use the factored version to get my zeros and multiplicities, which tell me my sign changes, so I can get my number line chart, and then I combine all of that to draw this nice, smooth, sort of hilly, continuous curve. Let's do another example. So here, once again, we have a simplified polynomial. And since there's nothing to combine, I know that my leading term is simply 6x to the third, so my n's behave like y equals 6x to the third, because all the other terms become insignificant on the ends of the graph. And I know a pot, x to the third, the left end goes down and the right end goes up, and multiplying by a positive does not flip that over. So here are, here's my end behavior for this function. Now I need the factored version of this polynomial so that I can get my zeros and multiplicities, etc. So I've got g of x equals, I can see that I can pull a 2 out of every term, so I'll do that first. And then I've got four terms inside, which means I'm going to factor by grouping. So let's kind of do some side work here in red. So I've got 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 27x plus 36. And I need to, I'm focusing just on what's in the parentheses. I'll deal with my two later, okay? So out of my first two terms, when I do my grouping, I can pull out an x squared, leaving 3x minus 4. And out of my last two terms, my first term is negative, so I'll pull out a negative, and 9 goes into both of those, leaving behind positive 3x minus 4. And now, from this and this, they share the 3x minus 4. It's in common, so I'll pull out the common factor of 3x minus 4, leaving behind the x squared minus 9. And we're almost done. We never like to have, um, this is where the college algebra version of factoring is a little different, perhaps. Um, and for me personally, I don't like to have a number in front of my x when I have a linear factor. So I'm going to pull this 3 out of x, 3x minus 4, and you can factor a 3 out of a 4. You just divide 4 by 3. So when I pull 3 out of 3x, that leaves x, and when I pull 3 out of negative 4, it leaves negative 4 thirds, because negative 4 divided by 3 is negative 4 thirds. And x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares, so I'll factor it using conjugates, x plus 3, x minus 3. Finally, that's how the parentheses up here factor. So now I can come back to my original problem and rewrite it. I've got two times, because this is a times here, what's in the parentheses, and that's what I have here. So I'll just copy that down. And now I'll simplify this a little bit because 2 times 3 is just 6. So I've got 6 times x minus 4 thirds, which I can write to the first power. That could be useful. x plus 3 to the first power, x minus 3 to the first power. 
And the reason I wrote those in is because those are my multiplicities. So let's list our zeros now. So our zeros are positive 4 thirds, negative 3, positive 3. Each of those has one a multiplicity of 1, which means they each have one sign change. Now let's do our number line chart. These are our x values. Negative 3 is the smallest. Then I've got positive 4 thirds. Then I've got positive 3. My y values at those three x values are 0 because if I plug any of those x values back into my function up here, I get 0 for the y. Okay. Then I'm going to use my end behavior to get the signs on the ends of my number line here and here. The left end is down, so I have a negative y value. The right end is up, so I have a positive y value on the right side. Then I have one sign change at each of these x values. So all all my signs are going to be different. So since this is negative and I have one sign change, this sign's positive. This is positive, and I follow that with an odd number of sign changes. This becomes negative. This is negative, and I have an odd number of sign changes, so that follows with a positive. Now I've got my entire number line chart. Let's draw the graph. So I've got negative 3, 4 thirds, 3, of course, my y-axis is somewhere like right here. My left end, well, let's, let's plot our intercepts first, our zeros, the places where y is zero. My left end's negative, and I know it goes down. My right end's positive, and I know it goes up from my end behavior before. Then between negative 3 and 4 thirds, my graph is positive, so I need to come up here smoothly above the x-axis. Between 4 thirds and 3, my y values are negative, so I need to go below the x-axis and smoothly connect to my last piece. And that is my graph of my original cubic function that I had here. Most of the work was in factoring. So you need to have strong factoring skills here. This certainly is not a video on how to factor. Uh, you could see a trinomial. You could see a difference of squares like we saw here. You could see grouping, whatever, whatever type of polynomial could show up here and you need to know how to factor it. So make sure you have good factoring skills um, and then if you can do that then it's pretty easy because your zeros are pretty simple to identify, multiplicity is pretty simple, which makes your number line easy, which makes your graph easy. Okay, take some practice but you'll get the hang of it.